order of business today would be to elect a chair of this committee. So could I ask members please for a proposal for the chair for this meeting? I propose Councillor Latham. Thank you, Councillor Jones. And could I have a seconder, please? I'd like to second that, oh, sorry, Chair. Can I confirm then for the all in favour of Councillor Latham as Chair for the Margam Crematorium for the next civic year? Thank you very much. Could Thank I ask now, please, for an appointment of Vice Chair, please? I nominate Councillor Davis. And could I have a seconder for that, please? Second. I second. Just to confirm then, all members are happy to support Councillor Davis as the Vice Chair for the forthcoming civic year? I'll take it's that as agreement. Um, so the constitutional arrangements are now finalised and I'll hand over to the Chair to take through the rest of the meeting. Uh, thank you, Craig. And can I thank colleagues yet again for um, giving me the uh, the pleasure of, of chairing this, this committee and I'm sure I speak on behalf of uh, Paul as well for his uh, reappointment as Vice Chair. Um, so we'll go straight into the agenda. Or oh, can I first of all, um, it would be res remiss of me not to mention um, Tracy, who's here um, as a Deputy uh, Superintendent down in Margan Crematorium. Uh, Tracy's come along today uh, as an observer, but I'm sure if, if she wants to contribute, then uh, we, we'll allow her to uh, say whatever she wants to say. So welcome, Trace. OK, so we'll go on to uh, part one, item one of the agenda. Any declarations of interest, please? I can see no, none, Chair. OK, thank you very much. Uh, we've done items one and two. Um, gender item four, minutes of the previous meeting, which is on pages three and four of the pack. Um, I'll go through them first for accuracy, and then if there's any questions, uh, we'll, or matters arising, we'll deal with them uh, afterwards. So on the first page there, we got members present, uh, items one, two, three and four, which go overleaf to the annual budget report and then urgent items as six. Are we all happy that they are at two record? Thank you. Have I got any matters rising out of those minutes, please? No, I don't see any. Okay, so that's all good. Okay, thank you very much. Um, next item on the agenda, agenda item five, uh, is the Magan Crematorium Service Level Business Plan for 2023-24. They're on pages uh, five to 40 within the pack. Uh, Craig, do you want to take this one over, please? Indeed. Thank you very much, Chair. So this is a report I thought would be very helpful to bring to members, not only to perhaps give an overview of the type of services that we're offering at Margaret Crematorium to the general public and some of the additional items such as our pricing structure and um, various other information which we hope the public will be interested in. We've also included within that document so perhaps a sort of makeshift forward work programme of the types of matters we're going to be considering at Margaret Crematorium over the course of the civic year. And you note at paragraph six of your report, I've just summarised about what some of those items are ultimately going to be, some of which have come to the committee previously and we've discussed as part of the overarching budget setting. But what I thought would be very helpful is just try to document it in one place so you can see the type of matters that officers are going to be considering as we look at service improvements and service efficiencies over the course of this coming year and, and future years in some cases. And obviously for members then to have oversight of the type of matters that we're going to be con considering. It's an ever-changing feast in the extent that we're always amending it and we're considering different aspects ultimately as we go forward but this is just the outline upon which we are starting with um, so just to give you a flavor of the type of things that we are going to be looking at um, always we're looking to continue our business continuity strategy and identify any sort of opportunities threats or constraints that the service face obviously a few years ago we had the, um, the start of the COVID-19 pandemic and that changed quite dramatically the way in which services were being offered so we always make sure from a business resilience perspective and continuity perspective we're keeping the service moving and we can cope with any sort of issues that may ultimately be thrown at us um, one of our biggest projects over the course of the next year is going to be enhancing our website and looking at ways in which we can develop 
with matters for the public to be able to access services online. So that could include, for example, memorial benches, memorial vases and the various different aspects where people, instead of having to perhaps make a visit to the crematorium or contact us via phone, will be able to undertake the renewal process online. And the team are presently liaising with our digital services section to see how we can enhance those services. And also at the same time as well, look to develop more of our presence on social media. You may have seen, for example, that some of the the private sector crematoriums obviously have quite a high presence where they demonstrate what that service is that's offered and information, for example, about various services that are taking place there. So we're going to look to see if we can enhance our service delivery to incorporate elements like that. We're currently in the process of modernising our Book of Remembrance uh, facility and, and again trying to modernise that so as well as it being equality proof when people uh, all people can have access to it, um, we're going to look to see how we can add certain elements online so people can access information at any time they would wish and are capable of viewing uh, transcripts and other extracts of it on a regular basis. We always work collaboratively with our local funeral directors and again we're looking at ways to enhance that and obviously try and find ways to bring them into service delivery to hear recommendation or thoughts from them and again if they have any suggestions we're always welcome to hear it and we can bring that back then to the committee for consideration. We're also looking at ways we can link in with our birth messenger births deaths and marriages services uh, based out in Neath, so we can try and make sure the council can offer a well-rounded consultation forum with uh, funeral directors and other stakeholders in the industry. Um, we are modernising the services. Um, we're now looking at ways of digitising a lot of our records and making sure that we've got easy access to, to various historical information that the crematorium holds and that work is currently ongoing. As you can imagine, it's a very document heavy service. So we're looking at ways ultimately to try and modernise that and make sure we've got uh, future proof uh, methods of keeping access to the information that we need. So if the public come and visit us or ask any queries, we're able to provide that. And of course, then, as we picked up in our budget setting um, process a, a few months ago, we are looking at some sort of refurbishment areas, whether that be redecoration, looking at potential changes to some of the ground structure and other sort of cosmetic elements. And again, these will be subject to future reports once we're in a position to seek the formal approval to go ahead. We're also looking at ways, obviously, for energy efficiency. The council has a very strong decarbonisation agenda and we're looking at ways ultimately that we can continue to work within that and find ways to improve the uh, efficiencies and programmes that we operate from Margam Crematorium and we're liaising with various external bodies like the FPCA which is one of the statutory oversight organisations and also with the council's own biodiversity and decarbonisation team so there's a lot of work ongoing in that regard. Uh, Wi-Fi and internet signal is something that's going to be on the agenda to try and enhance that over the course of the next couple of weeks. We're just waiting now for some new um, installation to take place, um, which will give us a much more resilient service, not relying on the current system that we have, but having a, a more stronger and resilient um, element there, which we hope for then will reduce any issues of losing connectivity, which the service has had as the, the Wi-Fi has been a little bit um, ad hoc on occasions, but we have now addressed that and we've got a new system going forward. And also as well, looking at continued ways then that we can engage with the public. Um, in the early days pre-pandemic, we used to hold open days, obviously for people to come in and dispel some of the myths associated with the crematorium and give people the access to the facility to see how the process works. Um, we're going to look to revisit those and um, bring them back in now towards the end of this year. Again, just as a way of trying to demonstrate what the work of Margam Crematorium is and give the public the opportunity to, to visit us and to, to, to meet the team down there and see how the service particularly operates. So quite a wide ranging set of activities, probably the team occurs to me with all the various work I'm giving them to, to try and do as we can try and bring this forward. But I think collaboratively what the team now are trying to do is work to improve and enhance Margam Crematorium. We're in a position where we have the resources hopefully behind us to, to now drive this piece of work forward. And um, the team led by Clive and Tracy will, will continue to drive a lot of this work programme forward. So a bit of an overview, which I've hopefully provided to members there. Happy to answer any questions. Similarly, Clive, if you can expand on anything as well, Chair. And um, over to members to see what you'd like to ask. Okay, thanks, Craig. Um, anybody with any questions or comments, Rob, in the chamber? Yeah, thank you, Chair. I got uh, about five or six uh, on the programme itself. Um, page seven, um, paragraph six, the refurbishment of the outside toilet block, uh, a report to be brought to the Margham Crematorium for the autumn of 23, 
um, if that report is approved during that autumn, then going into the winter with the outside toilet blocks is not a good time to be refurbishing those for obvious reasons, the damp and everything. You know, we need to start that program as soon as possible. So I'm disappointed to see the time scale there for obvious reasons. Um, over page, page eight, item eight, general decorative work in painting buildings, etc., to be undertaken through the summer of 2023. This was agreed some time ago that the external of the building was going to be painted. It was delayed because of the building works and uh, the restricted numbers of people. And we didn't want um, painters and contractors down there uh, uh, to to reduce the numbers of people that could attend. Uh, and again, throughout the summer of 2023. So have we got a definitive date of that is what, another question. Um, item 10, the enhancement of the Wi-Fi to be completed throughout the summer of 2023. This is vital for the income generation of streaming um, uh, and, and the video uh, that goes on there. And we can't afford to have a failure there. So again, um, sooner rather than later and i'm looking for a date there mr griffiths or clive in relation to you know throughout the summer we need to be more definitive in these um item 11 the 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 um proposal and the implementation date don't tie here it says an investigation to assure energy efficiency measures but then it says the program of work to be undertaken throughout 23 24 and the report of the joint committee well we're either having investigations or we're having work. It it doesn't tie up with what it's saying. And we raised this about the recycling of the heat generated from the cremators to heat the uh, uh, chapel. This is a way of saving money. It's decarbonisation. Again, I know we can only prioritise so much with our resources and the availability, but that is something that needs to be clarified in the report because the left hand side is not tying up with the right. We're either going to have an investigation and then have a report to say what we're going to do, or <laughs> it's the other way around. Um, and then um, two more points, uh, development of an open day again, autumn 2023, we're going into the winter. We are less likely to get people to come on an open day at that time of the year. We need to have it towards the end of, of summer um, to make it more attractive. People are more than likely to come uh, as opposed to the winter turning, who wants to turn out on a dark, miserable, rainy night, uh, unless the autumn 23 is to plan for the dates next year. I would like to see that we get some in this year. Um, and then finally, for me, a point that was raised with me by a member of the public, which ties in with income generation. Um, if, Mr Phillips, you could clarify, someone recently bereaved asked for a memorial bench, and they were told that there is a backlog of um memorial bench availability uh if you could clarify is there a backlog because the work that we're undertaking um you know what provision do we need to make to provide more benches for more memorials for income generation um that is something slightly off piece to you but again it's an income generator and it's something that's not included in the forward work program that we need to look at uh going forward and those are my questions thank you chair okay Th thanks rob do we like Craig will answer the first five and then um uh, <laughs> play, play come onto the benches? Absolutely. Thank you, Councillor Jones. Absolutely taking on board your comments in respect to the toilet block initially. The work is with our building control our building section at the moment, obviously, to undertake the various tendering that would be needed to try and get an indication of prices with the aim then that the report will come back to the crematorium committee for final approval. I do anticipate that whilst you may have the report ultimately in the autumn, the works itself may not commence until the early part of, of next year or going into the spring for it. But it we're waiting now ultimately for the building services team to, to come back to us with the requisite information. I know they've been having discussions with internally with various sections to be able to to bring forward a proposal ultimately that we can then present to the members for, for final approval. So absolutely taken on board. The works itself are not likely to be in the autumn, but hopefully we can get the report before you to give you that final overview in that sense. External refurbishment and the painting, that work is currently being tendered at the moment by our building services team. We've had to address a few specification issues in the manner in which it works, but once this tender then quotation has come back, we're hopeful that that work will be ongoing 
short way in the case. We haven't had an indicative time scale because obviously that will be subject to the tender process that's ongoing. And I, I don't have anyone from building services here today who perhaps could give me that overview, but I will certainly speak to them and try and get you a definitive time scale to all members to know what the, the dates are going to be then going forward. Yeah, if I can go back in on that point, this has been hanging around now for, well, almost pre-pandemic. Why are they so late in going out for tender? They've known that we've been wanting to paint there. We we, we delayed it because the building's completion. Uh, you know, why are they so late going out? I will try and find out that information. I don't know the time scale in which they've been working to. I think during the early phases, obviously, when we had the, the pandemic and we had the works programme that was going down there for the extension a couple of years ago, that delayed ultimately certain matters because they wanted those elements to be concluded. And I think it's only now getting onto their sort of forward work programme with the constraints that they, they operate and the resource element from there. But it is in hand. I've seen the tender documents now ready to go out and um, one of the officers is now working to try and coordinate that. But again, I will certainly relay those comments and we'll try and get you all a definitive time scale date as to to when that's happening wi-fi absolutely agreed we want this done sooner rather than later we've signed the contract it's now been waiting the organizers who are going to be installing it are hopefully going to be on site we're hoping in the next few weeks ultimately to try and take that forward because all of that work has now been concluded that we needed to do from the the legal and contractual side so it's just now organizations on site to undertake it they're anticipating they'll do it over a weekend so there will be very little impact ultimately to any service that we are looking at if there is going to be a slight impact maybe for one day we'll certainly let the committee know that there's a day that um, there may not necessarily be services just to enable that work ultimately to be completed and again we'll have that more resilient service going forward Programme of work, absolutely. Um, what we're looking at there is having a programme of work and, and sort of considered and investigated by our biodiversity and decarbonisation teams in that regard. And then we'll be presenting that ultimately to members. So I take on board the words don't necessarily marry up in that sense. It will be the investigation work is the programme of work that is ultimately going to be ongoing with a report being brought back then for different measures we can consider. And of course, if there are any budgetary implications, they feed into then the next year's budgets going forward. So it'll be the investigation investigation work that is, it is going to be ongoing and I've been liaising with the team and I think I've got a meeting with them next week actually to start talking about the various different works that we can look at there. Open day, we are aiming for early autumn, end of summer in that sense. I've said autumn 2023, probably around September time is the date ultimately we're going to be looking at that early, we, we, we'll try and aim for. So absolutely, I think the more better season in that sense, better weather, the more opportunity we have hopefully to try and bring people in for different elements associated with it. So again, late summer early autumn is the time scale that we are working on for that particular point. So I think that hopefully answers the questions on the report and I'll hand over to Craig to see if he can answer the question on the memorial. Thank you, Craig. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the problem we've got with the benches, um, and we have got a, a you know quite a number of people waiting, um, but there's an enormous carbon footprint because these benches are imported from China. Um, I'm looking at trying to reduce that. Um, and in fact, uh, the officers from Columbaria are looking at developing new type benches for, for crematoria to get away from the, uh, the, you know, the importing from China. Um, that, and that is the, that is the main reason. Um, but I am concerned, you know, that we're importing stuff from China when we're, we're supposed to be trying to, you know, reduce the carbon footprint, not increase it. Yeah, uh, thank you for that, Clive. And I think that's very sensible, particularly the way that we are driving in the council with the uh, zero carbon. Um, uh, but again, this is an income generator for us. There are people now that want to place memorials in and around and it would be great if we could look at an alternative um uh you know whether it's not granite but something that's durable and last for the 10 20 years or whatever for the for the memorials um, I, but I, I understand what you're saying yeah can i also add to that there are only so many benches that we could place in the crematorium without it you know being overloaded as well yeah, that, that, that's fine. But I think, therefore, we need to start making or looking at a policy of, you know, if we're full, then we got to offer alternatives. So the Book of Remembrance or, or offer those where they got somewhere where they, they have 
uh, a memorial that is a physical, tangible thing, as opposed to saying to people, I'm sorry, but we got no benches available and we're not going to have any for the next five, four years, whatever, because otherwise, you know, I feel that it would let people down then in relation to not having that tangible thing that they could go, they could see, they could touch or, or whatever. Um, and and it's, it's, it's an emotional thing then, put it that way. Um, but I certainly understand now the viewpoint that you've made, and I'll convey that back to the individual that raised the, the, the point with me. Um, there, there are, of course, still uh, curbstone memorials available. And, and I think plenty of them. Yeah, and I think therefore, if we're not providing the benches, could I respectfully suggest that we start pointing them in the directions of we can't give you a time scale in relation to a bench, but there are curbside memorials that you could actually uh, um, facilitate. You know, to yeah, to absolutely. have a memory uh, and a memorial for a lost one, um, and we then may not have as many curbside memorials uh, available. Yeah. For that, um, there may be one or two other options that Colin Barrier that you know can offer us as well. So yes, yeah. it's so as I said, it's just to make the, the the bereavement process for people a little bit easier that they can have that closure um, um, going forward. And and last point for me, Chair, is uh, I think Mr. Griffiths needs to have a stern talking with the head of legal in relation to the tendering process. And uh, I'm sure I'll help him if that's the case. <laughs> he just said he'd take that on board. <laughs> okay, thanks, Rob. Um, anybody else got any queries on on the report and what Craig has spoken about? Or any comments? No, I can see none, Chair. Okay, thank thank you, Jane. Um, before I uh, go into the recommendation um, on page nine, can I? I know a lot of hard work has gone into this uh, plan. Uh, the one that we've got in front of us now from pages 11 onwards. And um, can I thank Craig and, and Clive for, for... All right, I'll thank Craig then <laughs> for pulling it all together and, and, and coming up with what is um, um, a very, very, very good survey plan, Craig. Thank, thanks very much. OK, so um, I got the recommendations uh, on page nine. Uh, I'm happy to propose. Can I have a seconder? I second, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Are we all okay with that? Fine. Okay. Thank you very much. So we'll accept that report then, Jane. Yes, that's been approved, Chair. Okay, thank you. So moving on then, um, agenda item six, which is the outturn report and annual return for 2022-23. Um, it's on pages 41 to 58 of our papers. Um, Karina or Hugh? Karina. Hugh. Thank you, Chair. Um, so the purpose of this report is to provide details of the outturn position for 2022-23. It also includes the annual return, which is required to comply with proper accounting practices. This report provides details of the variances in service levels and income and expenditure since the committee approved the revised budget in February 2023. Members will note that there were 1,639 services provided in 2022-23, which is 139 more than budgeted for in February. In summary, the actual position shows that the net amount available to transfer to reserves is 116,252 more than anticipated at revised budget, which is made up of a reduction in expenditure of 41,334 and an increase in income of 74,918. Full details of each variance to the revised budget are shown in Appendix 1 on pages 48 to 50. I will briefly run through some of the main variations. IT equipment and website, there was an increase in expenditure of £2,142. This is due to an IT upgrade at the crematorium, which saw laptops provided, headsets, docking stations and additional monitors, which cost more than anticipated. Medical referee expenditure has increased. This is due to the additional services carried out over and above the 1,500 services budgeted for. Multimedia system expenditure has increased by £2,701. However, this is offset by increased income received from the service. The revised budget allowed £100,000 for capital works expenditure. The actual spend for the financial year was £58,780, resulting in an underspend of £41,220 at year end. Moving on to income, 
the revised budget allowed for 1,500 paid cremations. The actual number provided was 1,639, which has resulted in an increase of £68,910 in cremation fee income. Media services income, this service is increasingly popular, resulting in £4,148 more income than anticipated at revised budget. Memorials income, the income for memorials is difficult to predict. This year, we have seen a reduction in both the expenditure and income for memorials and benches. The crematorium's income and expenditure is transacted via Neath Potolba Council and interest is paid on the net funds held for the crematorium. This year, we received total interest income of £36,286, which is £1,286 more than anticipated at revised budget. The contributions to and from reserves were £116,252 more than anticipated. The table shown at the top of page 45 shows the closing reserve positions at 31st of March 2023. The draft annual return was completed and signed by who as the responsible financial officer on the 9th of May 2023. Appendix 1 on pages 48 to 50 provides details of the income and expenditure for the financial year and the variances to the revised budget. Appendix 2 on page 58 provides details of the balance sheet at the 31st of March 2023. Appendix 3 pages 52 to 57 provides details of the draft annual return for 22-23. Happy to take any questions that you may have. Okay, thanks Karina. Thank you very much. Uh, Rob? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I won't keep you long, Karina. I've only got 22 questions in relation. No, I'm only teasing. Um, no, excellent report and, and very clear. I just want to say thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry, I was way laid down by the... By... Sorry, Rob. Right, OK. Anybody else with any questions or comments on, on the report? I can see none, Chair. See any? OK, thank you very much. So, um, recommendation is on page 47 of the report. Um, I'm happy to propose we adopt. Can I have a second, please? OK, thank you, Paul. OK, you all happy with that? Okay. That's been, that looks like it's been approved, Chair. OK, thank you very much. Um, Thanks, Karina, again, for a, as, as Rob said, an excellent report and um, all looking good down there. Thank you. Um, item seven uh, is urgent items. Um, I haven't got any, but I, I want to fetch Jane in very, very briefly at this point just to explain what's going to happen now once this meeting closes. Um, and we go on to the next one. Yeah, if everyone who's online can stay online, because um, Craig is going to take everyone through the forward work programme. So if you can just stay on this call, please. OK, so at that point, then, uh, as I said, I, I haven't got any uh, urgent items, so I will now declare this meeting closed. Uh, thank you all for attending both in person and, and virtually. Um, and then do I have to officially open another meeting or go straight straight into it? Okay, go on. Ask Craig.